30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Like we want this mic. It's fine. All right. Whatever. Turn this off. There we go. Everybody hear us now? Are we good? Does it sound okay? I don't think it sounds great, but uh, I really wanted to use this mic, but I can't without having that with that camera hooked up. Dang it! Are we better now? Are we good now? Yeah, we're good. Everybody says we're good. Huh. Is it we're good? solid? Well, do we want to try and use that mic? Well, that's what I was saying. What about the other mics? Do we have I think the way mics? this one works is if I have this on. What about the little mics? They don't. They don't work. I tried. What do you mean? You can't they plug in the phone. No, it doesn't work. Oh. So if we remove that one, we're figuring this out as we go, guys. New, uh, new system. But the sus that you say, say it sounds good. So that mic, I guess, is okay. Okay. And they can see us. All right. So we're well, good there. Just thinking. Uh, it was. It's good dramatic effect. <laughs> It looks like we're doing something. We're, we're important, right? Well, let's get it on. We're gonna we're gonna get some controversy going. Y'all uh, y'all ready for a little controversy? We're gonna Ooh, talk we about score update. Ooh, score update. Sorry, guys. So obviously, I don't know if all of you are, but the world championships are about to end. They, they're about to start position round. Um, we're about to figure out who the final nine are to make TV. Uh, and we have a game update after sixty games. Jason Belmonte is your cut for the show, and he's 11 pins ahead of Michael Martell. Um, he is, let's see here, he 40. is 40 pins ahead of Kevin Williams in 11. And then your eighth place is Packy, who's only 13 pins ahead. And then there's a 130 pin jump to seven. So I would say, I'd say Sherman's pretty safe. I would say we have four people bowling for two spots. Yeah. would be safe. Uh, we have Kyle Sherman in seventh, Eric Jones in sixth, Justin Knowles in fifth, Graham Fa in fourth, EJ Tackett in third, Jesper in second, and Matt Russo is your leader, who is going to be your leader. He is only ahead by 322. We got some Jacob Buttruff type stats here. Amazing. Yeah, Absolutely he is amazing. running them over this week. Congrats on your second title, Matt. That's, that's impressive. Um, and he made the Shark Show. Yeah. The only lefty to make the Shark Show. So, yeah. Um, Pretty impressive. There were only, I believe, four lefties that cashed in Shark, and he was one of them. And then there were, uh, what did we say, 13 that cashed on Scorpion. 13 out of the 16 lefties this week in the field cashed on Scorpion. Um, and I'd have to check. Let me see here. I have Lane Cheetah Bowman. was one six, I think it was. Uh, let me see. Cheetah Championship qualifying combined. Pretty Let's sure it was six. Here. Which the one pattern that you would think the lefties would – have a much better chance on. I just think they were so easy that it didn't matter. Yeah. Like the right us throwing urethane early. Easy. Yeah, they easy for the they game. were easier than any league pattern I've ever bowled on. But um that's definitely uh my score showed that. So yeah for sure. Yeah. But come on now Lane talk. I need you to load. Work, you son of a biscuit eating bulldog. Come on now. Uh, By the way, shout out to Lane Talk. It's actually so cool that they do all this, everything that they have. Uh, Magnus, you're phenomenal. Um, this is great. There's a ton of stats. I actually have some here on my phone. 
Uh, they broke down left versus right, average pairs, things like that for different championships. So a um, lot of different different things they do behind the scenes that aren't necessarily just on the website that that they do and it's it's insane what they do for stats for us now um it's really cool to have this so oh thanks Lori. <laughs> thanks Lori. <laughs> so funny <laughs> that's good stuff right there i agree get a haircut <laughs> look i am getting a haircut i just don't know how much is getting cut off i need to mine's getting a little long too i gotta figure out how to trim it down just a touch you know it's getting to be uh, a little annoying it's getting in my face Come on, Aaron. Why is this? Uh, your internet stinks. Yeah, it's yeah, it's <laughs> my internet. It's not the internet of the person's house that I'm. Mine's working on. fine. I don't know what you're talking about. We are live on the interwebs on mine. We are, so we're good. Absolutely. Let's see. But we're going to talk about the left versus the right and all that stuff. And we're also we're kind of going to want to watch the the position round of. The world championships there i want to see who makes that show so we'll talk through that a little bit yeah so, they have not started yet so we'll, we'll probably be on here for quite some time but yeah we don't have a timeline for this there's no set script there's no nothing we just figured we have a night off um the shop's not open on thursdays so we figured why not jump on and, and talk and answer any questions that that you guys may have that's right that's right no. Bald is beautiful. <laughs> you have fun with that. Bald is beautiful. With I'm going to enjoy having hair until I can't enjoy having yeah. hair. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of receding hairlines at, at our age, and I'm going to be okay with it. The more important question is, should bowling be fair? My answer is no, it's not supposed to be fair. Everybody got to figure it out. Huh? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of... I don't know exactly what you mean by that. I don't that. understand um, that comment, to be fair. Yeah. How is it not? I mean, I understand saying, like, should bowling be fair, but I don't mean, know what you mean by the second part of that. So, um, I mean, inherently, bowling will never be fair. But you should try to make it fair. Sure, but it's, like, never going to be. It's almost like we'd have to live in, like, magical Christmas fantasy land for it to be perfectly fair. Right. Because, like, fair would be – so there were 16 lefties that bowled this week. So fair would be the percentage that they are of the field is the exact percentage that they are that make the cut of every single event. Like, that's perfectly fair, right? Because then it's just like... You know, if the lefties are just better bowlers. That may be the case. Could be. If that's the case, that percentage is not going to be higher, but then you could... Then they're still going to make arguments that, oh, well, they're better because the left is easy. That's not always true. Like, I, I will say some of the better bowlers in the PTQs this year were left-handed. Yeah, for sure. Like, they were the better bowlers, and they made it through more PTQs. And I don't think that's because the left was just walled. I think they were also the better bowlers. So he says everybody had an equal chance at the beginning to make it. The left just figured it out faster. I mean, I completely disagree with that, but that's just me. Um, if you're saying that about the World Series and about this week, I can, as someone that bowled, I cannot agree. I cannot agree with, with that statement at all. Um the 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 left is definitely very well let's see i mean if we just look at what transpired this week and we look at some of the stats of that i think it's just hard for us to agree with that statement do we have graphs for the patterns so we can break it down and see uh i think we could probably pull them up right so what okay so like the one we're specifically talking about would be scorpion. Would right? be scorpion, and it's asymmetrical. Right. It is an asymmetrical pattern. Um, so let's see what the download looks like and see if I can share this to the screen. Maybe, possibly. Hold on. Let's see if we can do that. Hey, no, go lay down. That's what she does. We start talking, and she goes yep. crazy. Yeah. All right. So here is this graph. Let me see if I can share it. So we're gonna show you guys the scorpion graph. Possibly. Hopefully. Maybe. Hopefully. That'd be kind of cool. Figure it out. Present. Share screen. We want to see a window, which is this one. Let me share that. Is that up there? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. 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 Now yeah. we're, we're cooking with gas here. Yeah. So now we're doing okay. All right. So here's the difference in the pattern. And you can even see just in the shape to the right. Like, look at the difference in the taper. 
Uh, if you were to look at the numbers over here, you could probably see the difference in the numbers too. And it's definitely clearly not uh, a symmetrical pattern, which I know there's people out there who believe that pattern should be symmetrical, but it's just, you, you can't do that. Like it just, there's no way because there's, for one, it wouldn't be fair to the left side for some of the patterns um, because if they're completely, like if the left side was the same as the right side here, I don't think it would have been very fair. I think they just went a little too far with the amount of taper and the shape on the left side here. So, so there's a couple different factors. Um, my opinion when it comes to this is I think that people that understand Thunderbolt and that bowling center, um, it is a very, I would say, what's the word I want to look for here? It's, it's, you're very forced to do certain things. Um, and this pattern being asymmetrical with the oil they chose to use, because we use different oils for each pattern this week. Um, the oil that happened to be used and the way this pattern just happened to match up to the building, the, the left just ended up being easier. Um, it, the righties, the shape in the pattern is in the track, but there's a lot of friction in the track at Thunderbolt. So we have an issue of where like the righties got forced into that flatter part of the lane a lot of the time. And then the way this oil develops with the pattern, it, it basically forces you to do certain things and the pattern would feel like it gets kind of cliffed and games four and five were pretty ugly. Um, I really dug deep to try and find it. It was really hard for me to find it. I could not. They have a stat sheet for left versus right on Cheetah. Lane Talk released this. There was also one that I saw for Scorpion, and the left was out averaging the right game five of the block by 45 pins. 45 pins was the difference in average. They were averaging 241, and the righties in the field were averaging 196. Is that a lot? It, it, it kind of is. <laughs> um, game four of the block, they were out averaging us. I believe it was like 27 pins. So combined in just those two games, the lefties were gaining seven or sorry. Yeah. 72 pins on the righties in just two games of the block. Mm -hmm. So it, it has nothing to do with like, in my opinion, it's, you know, they don't get to choose this. The, the lefties are going to take what they, they have and as they should. Yeah. It just happened that they were that much easier and they were able to do that. They got really ugly games four and five for, for the right side, depending on what parts of the building you hit and what pairs you hit and who you followed. So it, it just got tough. And it, I shot 160 game five of one of the blocks, and the other righty in my pair shot 150 that same game. Meanwhile, Eric and yes, or Dio Bernard, who I crossed with, and Jesper, who I crossed with, both shot 240 plus that game. So it it's just massive. Um, but it's not their faults. You know, they, they're bowling the same tournament we're bowling and it's not like there weren't pretty that made it, but 11 of the 16 that made the match play for Scorpion were left-handed. So, um, and again, there were only 16 lefties in the field. So it's, it's tough. There's a lot of factors that go into this and it's not just, Hey, you know, we, we think this is the right thing to do. It, it, a lot of times we don't necessarily know. I mean, when we bowled practice on that pattern three days prior, um, they didn't feel that hard. But after bowling two days on Cheetah and then bowling that pattern, they just they felt different and they, they didn't play exactly the same. They never really do from practice. So it just played out the way it did. So there's not much we can really do to that. But it, it was very defining because of that that pattern. Yeah, so, okay. But take a look at this. Hey, I need the the login for this, or I need to like, sure. I, yeah, so I can actually see the comments. I told you. <laughs> well, I know. But I'm just go to here. Hold on. I can, I can invite you. Hold on. Okay, do that. I did not invite. Copy. I can't done. see all the comments. I know. He, uh, he did. He did. He said it's. All right. I gotta send it to you through Facebook so you can get it on the computer. Gotcha. Hold on one second, folks. I'm gonna show you the difference between this pattern and then the um, the master's pattern. Oh, Alan! Alan coming in here with his uh, his his logic. <laughs> Fair would be 
Fair would be everyone spending the same number of frames for getting out the next pair. Unfortunately, that's never going to happen on the PBA tour because we have ball reps. So, um, you know, if the ball reps do a good job and they're helping you know, sometimes it takes you zero frames to figure out that pair. So, there you go, go to your Facebook and you can I just send it to you through your yeah. Facebook chat messenger. All right, so let me, okay, so everybody take a look at this pattern now. So you can see this pattern here and the shape of this pattern um, and the difference in the taper over here versus the taper to the right. And then if we pull up, if I can get back to where I need to be here, I will turn that on. Nope, one second. Yeah. Where's the volume now? Just mute yourself. Or no, it's your volume on your computer. You got to turn your volume on. I know. I'm just trying to mute the. There you go. Well, Tony, you can just mute the video. All right. Um. So let me. Okay. Change this. We will stop that, and then I'm going to change it to this other one. And so now I'll take a look at this other pattern. There we go. Now I can see how that's. Here, I'll just share this so you can see this, and then we'll go over to this. There we go. So now, look at this pattern, left versus right. Look at the amount of taper to the right compared to the left. How many blocks, how much flatter it is to the left. This would be why the left struggled as much as they did on the left side. Yeah, even though this pattern's asymmetrical, I mean, it's technically flatter on the left. It's 1.4 to 1 compared to 1.7 to 1. Right. So, I mean, it is technically flatter and I think topography in that building kind of made it worse for them mm -hmm. um, they were forced into that flatter portion of the lane they couldn't necessarily like play the gutter you know the gutter didn't look very good there on either side so um, yeah I mean I think so I guess the, the major question here is is how do we accomplish creating patterns that are quote unquote fair like, well, how do we make them fair for both sides to where one side's not running the other side over I think, I think the only way to do that is start developing the patterns for the building you are going to be bowling in. And, and to be fair, before you go into this, I just want to make it known and clear that we are not by any means saying that either USBC or the PBA did anything wrong with their patterns. No. These patterns were predetermined. They were designed. No. These were all set before everything happened. That's I what I was saying. They so intended. Alfred, Alfred White makes the comment, the Masters had no lefties even close. Do you think the PBA overreacted due to the Masters? I don't think it had Alfred, anything to do with that. The PBA didn't do anything differently. These patterns and these graphs were designed before the season even started. These patterns were known that they were going to be used in this building before we started the season. The PBA didn't change these patterns after the Masters thinking we need to give the left easier. That did not happen. The PBA would not do that. They are not going to do that. That's not what happened. This was set before we even got close to bowling. So the USBC didn't go into this thinking, oh, we don't want the left to win. They designed this pattern. You know, I think Nick Hoagland still divine, designs their patterns. Mm -hmm. um, this pattern was designed, you know, months ahead of time. They know these things way ahead of time. That's why this year for the US Open, the patterns got released early because Rob Gottschall left the USBC and is now working for Storm. So they released the patterns because Rob had been involved with those patterns and that event. Yes. So they released them so that everybody knew so that Storm players would not have an advantage. Um, this is not, they don't, they don't do that. That does not happen. That's not a thing. They did not overreact. They didn't think, oh, the lefties got shut out the Masters. We need to give them something here. No, that's not the case. What happened was the patterns just matched up a weird way to the building and it is the way it is. Yeah, I don't think they did anything different. intentional here. I don't think yeah, this, this was, was a. Uh, um, I don't think they said, you know what, we're going to give the left the world because of the Masters. I, and I don't think anybody said, I, I just don't want to see a lefty on the show, so yeah. we're just going to make the left impossible. Yeah. And but you can clearly see, based on what we know with the friction of that center, that like the reason why the lefties didn't score. Sure. Like looking at this pattern and what they had to deal with compared to what we had to deal with. It was, yeah. just, it was clearly they different. felt infinitely easier for us, right? Um, just because the taper that was in the pattern just 
on the taper the on top of the actual topography of the of the center just really matched up well to make the righties a lot easier. It, well, it allowed the righties to start straighter and break them down to where then the, you could just yeah. migrate left. Which so, made scores higher because the burn squads were easier than what they normally are. Like, those kind of things. Yeah. So, um, like, Rick Fredette makes it – it's funny how when lefties have a good week or a good turning, people are up in arms. But when one lefty makes it, that's it. No, I can't. No, you can't? Oh, okay. I can't. Um, like, he says this, and that's not true. There were plenty of complaints and lefties complaining at the Masters. And there were lefties this week that even came out and said, hey, this isn't what we want. This isn't good for anybody. Like, we don't want this either. So, no, that's not true. People don't just do this because the lefties had one good event. Um, and we're not sitting here bashing the left because of it. We just want to talk about it. Nope. We're just having a discussion because this has been the discussion on Facebook. The cheetah scoring, like the, the scoring pace has been a discussion. The, the left versus the right has been a discussion this week. We just want to talk about it. I mean, that's what it is. I bowled the tournament. So I can hopefully answer some questions for some people that, you know, might not 100% know exactly what went on because I was there. So it, it's, it's not that we're sitting here complaining. They're good bowlers. Everyone that bowls on the PBA Tour is a very, very good bowler. But when you give them the smallest advantage, they are good enough to take advantage of it. And that's what they did. There's nothing against them for doing that. They're very good because they did do it. So we're giving them that credit. But again, you know, we use the word fair. We all want it to be fair. We all want this to be the best for everybody. So let's have a discussion. That's what we're here to do. So, yeah. And, and so like with the USBC and the Masters, I think what most people don't realize is the USBC goes into these centers that they're going to use. Although I, I might get in trouble for saying this, but I think that center was an absolute shit show. I, I don't believe we should have been in that bowling center. I think that was a garbage choice. And I don't, but I don't think USBC necessarily had a choice because they bid it out. So it's basically whoever's going to pay the most money to have them. And that was a center that had the ability to do it. So they ended up going there, but that place was no offense to whoever runs that place, but there was panels that had holes in them and cracks. And there was just, the place was just trash in my opinion. And I'm, I'm going to say that out loud. I think a lot of players want to say it out loud. So I'm just going to say it and represent everybody for that because everybody was talking about it. But when what USBC does is they actually go into these centers and they take the measurements for all of the, the panels, all of the lanes, and they go in there and they attempt to fix the topography. They attempt to fix the flatness of the lanes to make them and level them they normally, out. Yes, That's they, why they, they normally do the do... topography graphs and give you these books that show you all the topography and all the lanes. They try to get them as flat as they possibly can. Unfortunately, there was just some panels they couldn't fix, I guess, where your ball would hop 30 feet in the air, it seemed like. I, I mean, holes in the lanes. And... What do you mean, come on now? I did not 30 feet in the air. I mean, it was 30 inches. No, maybe not. I mean, it was it, it was noticeable, though. Oh, they started position wrong. They did. Mm -hmm. They did. We're taking a look. They're showing the Martel versus Bellman match. Um, I think I can't see it. This this one. Okay, there we go. It's not showing whether Belmo made the spare or not, but I'm assuming he has strike nine spare, strike nine spare, nine spare. Michael Martel has double six two nine spare through four frames. Oh, I think they just put this in the wrong spot. Belmo has not bowled the fifth frame yet. Um, and like we said, Kevin Williams is forty off. He started with triple nine out strike. So. So he needs them all. Um, Possibly. I mean, this doesn't look like it's going to be the highest scoring affair. If he shoots 240 here and wins, and, you know, this is like 190 to 180, I mean, he can make up 40 pins that way. Sure. You know? So he needs to beat Belmo by 41. Martel does? Or no, Kevin Williams does. Kevin Williams has to beat Belmo by 41. And win, and the win game. if Belmo wins. and win the game, yes, yeah. Assuming that Belmo also wins, uh, is there anything even in the top? Let's see here. I guess, all right. So, so here's a question Graham you. and EJ are bowling. I guess Graham, EJ, and Jesper are technically bowling for second. So, while these guys are bowling, of all the lefties, how many lefties are on this right now? What uh, so there were nine lefties of the 16 in the field that made the top 16 of the world championship. Who of those nine lefties would you say is the best all around bowler? Put me on the spot. That's, Put me on the spot. Wow. John, I don't answer that. I don't want to answer that question. You don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's so tough. I don't – I've only been out here for a little while. It's tough, like, getting to see these guys do some different things. Um, 
That's that's. I mean, I think you, you at this point would have to say that Jesper is probably the best lefty in this field. But like, I I really 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 respect Matt Russo's game. Um, he has made multiple shows now in a row, not throwing your thing, throwing resin, doing different things on the lane. Um, I I think he's super underrated. I don't think people give Matt as much credit as what he should get. I think he took his thumb out of it as well a couple months ago and then just won another title. Like, I I think he deserves a lot of credit. I think he's a phenomenal bowler. Um, But I can't take anything away from Jesper either. You know, Jesper's been dominant on the tour for years. So you can't ever take that away from him. You've got Graham Fa, who is arguably the best bowler in the central region by a mile. He wins how many of your tournaments here? It's not even fair. It's the like, centers we bowl in. Yeah, but he crowbars you guys. Like he, he leads tournaments by three hundred. It, it was it's crazy. insane. When he was like he was on motive staff there, and he went through his lull. That was the year that I actually had a chance, and I won Player of the Year that year when he was on motive staff. And then he went to Brunswick and started throwing purple balls, and he just ran us over. Yeah, like, it wasn't even close. He won like six of the events. But I mean, it was stupid. Yeah, like, I mean, Martel clearly loves bowling in this building. Um, he bowled phenomenal at the Masters last year, finished second, and then is bowling a great week. Um, Packy has won, he won two titles last year, just bowled for another title last night or two nights ago. Um, I mean, he's, you know, his ball rolls insane. He's very forward for a lefty. It's kind of different. Um, Eric Jones, I've got to watch him all year on the PTQs. I mean, dude makes so many cuts. He's so good. He has, he has like, four regional titles or something. I don't even know already. And he's like 21 years old. Like, I mean, he's insane. So who knows? Like, you know, Jesper's 28. Eric's like 21 or 22 or something like that. I mean, Eric's going to win out here. I'm, I'm, I mean, Dio won. And I think Eric's just as good as Dio. Um, I think they're both phenomenal. You know, Kevin Williams just made another show two, two days ago as well on Scorpion and is, you know, like we said, 40 pins off this show right now for the World Championships. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's tough. Dio, again, you know, pulled all the PTQs. Eric and Dio are the only ones. They pulled more games in this field than anyone in the tournament. They've had to bowl PTQs. They pulled the doubles PTQ and the World Series PTQ. Made it through both of those. Made match play in the doubles. Dio made match play in Cheetah and in Scorpion and won Cheetah. Eric made match play in Scorpion and... Now the world championships. Dio also made the world championships. I mean, those two are just bowling phenomenal. Um, I've gotten my face kicked in by them all year, so it, it it's hard to sit here and say who's who's arguably like the most versatile. I think you can't take anything away from what Russo has done this week. I mean, yes, the left may have had an advantage this week, whatever it may be, whatever we want to say, but like you're leading by three hundred and twenty-two pins. Like that's over sixty games, and you're not just leading like all righties, you're leading all the other lefties as well. Yeah. So even if you want to try and say they had an advantage, right. he's still doing it the best. He's doing it. So it's better. just like, I mean, and again, one, two right now is Russo Jesper. So if we're saying that those are two of the best guys in the field, it's hard to argue with that because they're one, two right now. So yeah. like for me, I'm a little biased. And I'm they're pro- even bowling on a different pattern right now. Yeah. Like these 16 games today were a completely different pattern. So this pattern, it's probably asymmetrical. I, I don't even know exactly what it is, but it's like, they found a way to do this. I mean, look at Russo's block. 250, 260, 230, 250, 220, 180, 210. Mm-hmm. Like, he's bowling phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just deserves it. He's averaging 239 for 60 games. It's pretty sick. That's insane. It's pretty sick, Joe. Like, you can't take that away from anybody. I don't care if you're left-handed, right-handed. You don't bowl with any hands. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. To do that for a week over 60 games on four different patterns. Yeah. Look at that block that Graham's putting up. That's pretty good. 250, yeah. 270, 220, 250, 20, 240, and then he bowled. Oh, no, I was looking at Justin. I'm sorry. You're looking at Justin. Look, look at Graham's at block. Graham's well, block Graham's is 210, 250, better. 250, 270, 230, 230, 240. And I'm looking. Then you got Justin, 250, 270, 220, 250. 20, 240, 190. Yeah. But, like, again, he's basically locked himself on the show. I mean, he can't. Yeah, you're not. He's basically going to be the five seed. I mean, he is 40 back of, of Graham, so he, he could possibly He'll catch Graham. There. He could catch Graham or EJ, depending on what the scores look like this game. But what do we got here? So right now, Jesper Ooh, is Jesper the two seed. Yeah, he had the front eight. Jesper went front eight with the seven pin. Graham's got 270 as well. And got 270. That's my pick as the best lefty. Maybe you I'm like a little Graham? biased, but I, I watch him do yeah. so many different things with both reactive and urethane 
And I think I think Russo is the same way. Russo uses reactive and your thing. Yeah, my, not, my only gripe with Jesper is he's just he's so much better with your thing than he is with react, reactive. I just don't think I think his rev rate's a little higher than some of the other guys. Like his rev rate's significantly higher than than Russo's in my opinion. Yeah. So like I just don't think he has to because he can do more things For with sure. the your thing ball. For sure. He. Like, I watched him this week when we bowled on Scorpion. I mean, he was manipulating how far he was throwing it on the lane. Uh-oh. Does that matter? Yeah, it does. That's huge. That's giant. He was shooting 250. Michael Martell in the ninth just 680. 680. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some drama. Because now I think if he strikes out, he shoots 220. And Belmo... Will only need a mark in the tenth. Yeah, Bumble will only need a mark in the tenth to shoot. Or no, Bumble no, can only shoot two fifteen. Shoot no, so Martel now needs a double to lock him out. Most likely, they haven't updated the the thing yet. So, but he's twenty back. Oh yeah, so thirty pins is enough either way. Yeah, because he was shooting two fifty. Yeah, that didn't matter. Okay. Yeah, whoever wins this match is the Nazi. Right. So Bumble could fall out. I never would have saw that game coming. Yeah, I mean, let me see here. Who's eighth? Packy's eighth. What is Packy shooting? No, I can't see it. Yeah, it depends. I mean, I guess Belmo is only 13 pins behind him. So if Belmo shoots 215 and Packy shoots less than 202 and loses, he would jump Packy and then he would be the nine seed. Right. So that could happen as well. It could, but it does not. Unlikely. Well, hold on. Hold on. Kevin Williams has 240 plus a win out there. That's 76. And he's only 40 back. Yeah. And, and this is a three pin match between Martel and Belmo. Oh, yeah. So, like, this is where I'm saying this could be 2 0 to 2 0, and he makes up. That 240 gets him in. The math is there, right? 240 with a win gets him around both of them. No. Does it not? <laughs> 76. If he shoots 246 76 and Belmo shoots 205 with a win. He gets in. So here's what's going to happen. So if Martel makes the spare, well, Eric he's Jones shoots 250 as well. Packy. So yeah, he's Packy's in. So Packy's in. Packy's in. Packy's in. Packy's in no matter what. Kyle's in. Eric's in. Knowles is in. They're all in. But here's what happens. So if Martel makes this seven pin and shoots 208, let's just say 208, mm -hmm. but Belmo doubles, Belmo is your nine seed. And Martel and Kevin miss. Because two team Because 240, 240. That's only 30. He only yeah, makes, up, he 30 only makes pins. up 30 pins. But if Belmo goes spare now Kevin and Martel wins, he jumps both of them and Kevin's on the show. But Kevin has to strike. He has to double. Woo! Kevin's getting ready to step up in the 10th, right? Woo! If he doubles, there is a... If he whatever he does in the tenth is what Belmo has to do in the tenth. Hold up, folks. We got drama. Sorry, we're getting to your questions here in a minute. We're trying to figure out who's making this TV show. This is because we're talking about arguably the greatest of all time, and you know Michael Martell trying to bowl for his first title could be on the show. Kevin trying to get title number two and second show of the week, first major. Yep. Let's see. Got that first one. one's ten back for first Kevin. Oh, man, first one's ten back for Kevin. That's crazy. Well, count matters here, too, because Martel – so Martel is 29 pins ahead of Kevin. Mm -hmm. So count matters because – So he would need – yeah. Yeah, count definitely well, matters. Say he gets seven here and Belmo goes strike spare for 205 and it's high. That changes everything. And then Kevin jumps them both. Martel struck. Yeah, so Belmo needs a double to make the show, to lock himself in the show. Yeah, but here's the thing. So say he goes nine spare. Say Kevin goes nine spare here and shoots 35. Mm -hmm. 35 is only 27 pins ahead of Martel. Which isn't enough. Isn't enough. Martel's on the show. So if Kevin well, gets well, no, this one. Martel's not. Well, if, only one of these three can make it. Correct. I'm just saying, if Kevin gets this one, then... Kevin Martel is locked out. Yeah, Martel is locked out. Kevin has to strike here. No, and he didn't. He did not. So Kevin, Kevin's out. Kevin is out. So now it's either Martel or Belmo. Belmo needs a double. And no, 
Flat no. Flat 10. Thumb only is the messenger short. So it hits Martell's it. Martell's end. Martell makes the show. Martell is your nine seed. Martell is your nine seed for the show. Wow. How did that messenger not get there in time? That It hit it. It did. It just didn't fall over. Michael Martell's the nine seed for your TV show. So does that make it seven lefties? I believe. Let me look here. Russo, Jesper, EJ, Graham, Justin Knowles, Eric Jones, Kyle Sherman, Packy, and Michael Martell. Yeah. So we so have seven two, lefties. Seven lefties of nine. Yikes. Seven out of the nine. The only two righties are going to be EJ Tech and Kyle Sherman. We have to talk about Kyle Sherman. We are going to talk about We him. have to talk about Kyle Sherman this week because, I mean, I don't know what content has been on his YouTube channel. I haven't seen a lot of it. He talked about it. He did say, I watched it. He talked about it. Did he? He talked about his finish. It's right. absolutely insane. This man, total this week, <laughs> missed cashing in all three animal patterns by a total of nine spots. He finished 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, where the top 20 cash in each animal pattern and was 15th overall going into the world championships. He didn't cash in any of the animal patterns, didn't make one match play and made it in. That is phenomenal bowling on every single pattern. That is insane. That's gross. Like do you bowled, he bowled phenomenal to do that. That is when you only take the, t there are always some guys every year. I feel like when they took the top 24, there's always a couple guys, like one or two guys, that could not make a match play, but make it into the top 24. Yeah, you've done it. There was always one or two guys a year that did that, where they would finish 20th, then they would finish 24th, and then they would finish 30th, and that got them the 22nd spot in the world championship. They wouldn't make it into match play for any of the animal patterns. Because in the past, it was just you had to make the top 16 or you didn't cash, right, mm -hmm. in the animal patterns. So, yeah, there was always some guys that did that, and they would make match play because it was top 24. This year, it's only top 16. That changes a lot. So, not cashing in any animal pattern and making that top 16, bro, you bowled phenomenal. Hats off to you, man. You bowled great. That is insane. I To do that is That's absolutely nuts. He's the only person in the top 16 that did that. Because Wilkins made one of the finals, right? I don't know. Didn't he? I'm sure he did. I don't think he made Cheetah. Did he make Sharp? Maybe he didn't. No. No, he had There's no way. One. Maybe he did the same same thing. Maybe. No, he cashed in Cheetah. I know he cashed in Cheetah. For some reason, I cannot get Lane Top to open. Let's find out here. Everything right. else is working. So Cheetah. Look at the scores. Cheetah Wilkins, where are you at? Wilkins, Wilkins. He was twenty first. So he, he did not. He cash. did not cash. So he was twenty first. Let's check out Scorpion now. Uh, I don't have internet access. Scorpion, Zach Wilkins was twentieth, so he did. He got. He snuck out. Oh wait, there was twenty one cashers on. Really? Yeah, twenty one cashers. So he cashed in Cheetah and in Scorpion. Is that right? Or did he not cash and did it not show him cashing in Cheetah? Hold on, buddy. Oh, it doesn't. It only shows points here. It doesn't show money on this one. For Cheetah. Oh, they didn't. I thought it was 20. So it must have been 21. So I guess he cashed in both Cheetah and Scorpion, but he didn't make match play. But still, it's still tough. And then you got Shark. You've got Wilkins. Finished 22nd. 22nd. So he went. He did 21st, basically the same thing. He did thing. the same thing. He went 21st, 20th, 22nd. That's sick. He didn't make match play. That's insane. Zach, you're a sicko. You've also cashed in like every event this year except for two. That's insane. I know you're probably not happy right now. I know the the match play for World Championships probably didn't go the way you wanted, but dude, you've bowled absolutely amazing so far this year. Like, 
Come on, man. Keep going. Like, absolutely insane. Oops. I missed this. Oh, you want some grapes, bro? Put the grapes. But, yeah, so Zach Wilkins did the same thing. All right, get them questions out. Let's answer some questions now. So we have, wait. Okay. Yeah, it's still not updated online yet with 61. But we'll see if there's any other changes. But sorry, my, my internet decided it was not going to continue working. So let me uh, load this up so I can look at some of your questions. Holy ball sack. Why are these so good? Bro, I told you they're amazing. Unreal. Off top for a second. They're like candy. Mm -hmm. Some grapes. Let's do some grapeage. Mm. Um, so mm -hmm. be bold. Off topic for just a sec. Would like to get your thoughts on the introduction of string pins. It's ruining the game, in my opinion. Do you think... This will the PBA will eventually host string pin tournaments. Um, I think the USBC certified string pins are harder to strike on than free fall. When they're that's new. a hot take. You mm -hmm. might not believe me when they're new, but yeah, because like you can't. It's harder to throw messengers. It's harder to do other things. I but think there the are certain string pins. Yes, but I think there are certain string pin string pin setters that are not certified that are not USBC certified and. Those you can end up with some very interesting things. So I don't think it's ruining the game. Um, it's better for bowling centers. It's a better resource. They don't need. They need less maintenance. Um, so I think in the long run, it's something that's probably going to help our sport. And I think the technology will probably only get better as more centers start to use them. So I'm. I don't genuinely think it's a good or bad thing. I think it's just we're a sport that technology advances, and that's going to happen. So. We're still trying to figure it out, honestly. They're still doing research and whatnot. But first first initial uh, statistics of what they found was scores dropped about 10 pins a game for average league bowlers um, because the strings being longer didn't allow the pins to get pulled over by strings and didn't allow the messengers off of the wall. You have to add me to the stage. I think that would allow me to like put comments on the screen. No, that just makes you pretty. Oh. <laughs> no. No. Nope. Okay. So know. then, that's interesting. That's uh, just because you're not uh, an admin on here. Gotcha. But uh, so somebody that has string pins installed said that um, he told me I don't know if it's true or not, but he told me that Tom Clark was adamantly against the string pin thing, and he'll never have PBA events on string pins. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I was told. Yep. Um, I haven't heard that, but it's also something, honestly. None of the guys on tour are talking about. It's not something we discuss. It's has a hasn't been a topic yet. We haven't needed. Yeah, to. I mean, I don't believe there's any Bolero centers that have them, or are there any? I don't know. But none of the Bolero centers that we bowled PBA events in, or the centers we go to, are. So it's just not been a discussion. We got to plug your phone in. Oh, poopy. Yeah. Oh, let me grab a charger. <sighs> but so the string pens. Um, they do stretch. The strings on the pins stretch, which then allows them to start having those weird carry again. So, at least that's what I was told. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I've never seen it. I just know what we're talking. I know what they've been telling us. So, that's about it. That one? What? Well, he's using the iPad. Oh, well. oh, yeah. Here, I've got a cord here. All right, that works. Just plug it into the laptop. Yeah. Got it. Here, come here. Bada boom, bada bang. There you go. Now we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Good. All right. What's so, origin? Is it? Let's find out. Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. We solid. So. Um, All right. More questions. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, side question. What's your guys' opinion on your trials? Are we talking about tour trials? Yes, that's what he said. If you're... Oh, yeah. Tour trials. Um, my opinion? I don't want to bowl it. Still got one week left. Trying uh, not to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still got the TOC, so hopefully we both can make it through the PTQ there, and we can try and not have to bowl tour trials. That's the goal. Um, I know I moved up a little chunk in the points this week getting to bowl and bowling okay in Cheetah, but yeah, we're still hoping not to bowl. Yeah, so that's, that's our opinion. Right now. <laughs> All right. 
So 43rd before all this is added. I don't think any of the World Series stuff is added in yet. So 43rd is Zach Tackett at 4325 points wise. All right, let's see here. Scrolling on down, Shota could jump up there because he finished second. But the points at the World you, Series—you don't get a lot for the animal patterns, so those, those you're not going to jump. Not, you're not going to jump a ton. Um, and I don't know if he's allowed to bowl the TOC. Yeah, Cody, so, you were seventy-second going into this with just the doubles. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I'll probably move up a little bit, but not a ton. And then I'm eighty-eighth. But that like like think about that. So so I'm 88th, averaging 216, and you've cast for everything. Yeah. And you are 72nd, averaging 215 for all the events. Yeah, I bowled 170 games. I'm the usual. You bowled 170. Yeah, because you you made through. Oh, I bowled 100 more games. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you bowled the Players' Championship. And I the U.S. Not. Open. And the U.S. Open. Yeah, that makes sense. Butch, the U.S. Open is one of the lowest scoring events of the year. So. But, okay, so that's that other topic we wanted to talk about, which how freaking hard it is to get through the PTQs. It is. It's not easy. And why? Like, like it's just, it's insane. Whoa, where am I going? What's, what's going on here? I'm on the wrong screen. There we go. Um, so, John Willock... Uh, so only 12 spots for trials. If so, how many will attempt it? That field will be full. I believe they're capping it at 90. Um, I think that will be full. That's not a good World Series Cody. You gained the tenors. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'm definitely not disappointed with how this week went. I think there were some factors that, that affected those last couple days. Um, I mean, I, I guess I can talk about that. It is what it is. I think you guys deserve to know. Um yeah, obviously made a made a good run on Cheetah. Had a chance to make that show. Would have been my first show. Felt like I bowled pretty good. Um, gave myself a chance. Sh you know, shot 268 and what would have been 240, and and lost to Marshall bowling good. Um, he got some breaks. You know, I I probably got some breaks too. So it, it's bowling. We know that is it is what it happens. And um, he was very respectful. There's a video on the PBA YouTube. Uh, about the Cheetah Championship and what he said was was very nice of him. Thank you, Marshall. I really appreciate that. Um, but oh, they do have points added for most of these already. Oh, they do already. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was wondering because I was in the seventies before, so now they just joined the World Championship. Then, yeah. Play that down. <laughs> the World Championship points. But right now. Um, yeah, so I think I struggled a little bit the third day. You know, not leaving the bowling center until almost eleven thirty after bowling match play for Cheetah. And then having to bowl the next day on Scorpion, um, I think I didn't quite – I probably wasn't mentally as good of a spot as I needed to be going into that Scorpion block, the, the two blocks the next day, just trying to get over what had happened the night before and, and kind of move forward. I think it's pretty tough trying to do that, uh, bowling a ton of games. I think Shark Championship probably could have gone a little bit better as well just because – I bought 113 games of competition in about 15 days. So my body's not necessarily used to that. I had seven months off from surgery. So I'm, I just kind of, I, I feel like a little bit of fatigue got to me. And I, I feel like mentally that everything that happened with Cheetah was definitely tough for me to deal with since it was the first time ever. So, um, but I'm not happy. I'm not unhappy with the week. I, I bowled great. I'm, I'm really happy. I, you know, we finished 11th in the doubles, which was really fun to do. First time ever bowling a doubles tournament together, and we finished 11th. Like, that's that's a lot of fun. So, I I enjoyed it. I would do it again. I always love these opportunities, and it's just great to be out here. So, it, it was fun. Bill's leading points. Yeah, he was leading the points going into this week. It's pretty cool. But if EJ finds a way to win the – the world championship, he'll probably be your front runner for player of the year. I would say the two titles and then he would take the lead in the points. Yeah. So I would assume so. Yeah. With the world championship not being in there. And that's the thing too, that's not in yet. Like those points are going to change a ton because the world championships worth the most points. Right. So, yeah. but yeah, there's, there's still going to be a ton. Um, yeah. And so for like tour trials, like um, the top 100 get, get, uh, priority into entering 
So you don't get to just enter, you know, as anybody. You kind of have to have, there's all kinds of stipulations on who can enter. Yeah, first. there's a bunch of tiers. There's probably going to end up being a PTQ for tour trials. Mm -hmm. So um, I know both of us getting into like JR, you know, the doubles really helped a ton because it got you in the top 100. I think they should keep you in the yeah, top. Yeah, I only have points in two events because. I only made it out of one PT. I didn't even make it any other PT. PT it's yeah, just but like the Masters. Rich is going to go around you. Yeah. Because, well, and actually probably El tomorrow. So you might drop down a couple. It's just yeah. the World Championship. It's inevitable. But, it's going to happen. Yeah. But either way, a lot of this doesn't matter if with the TOC left. We still have triple points from a major. So mm -hmm. it's. Yeah, not everybody gets to bowl that. So. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that can't bowl it. And <clears throat> You never really know. I mean, you have one good showing in a major. You could finish. You make the show at a major, and you'll make you'll jump into the top thirty. So, it changes a lot. It, it's it's a very 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 big difference. Yeah, but he's going to get points from the world championship. Oh, that's all he bowled. Correct, but he's going to get points from the world championship, which right. is going to probably jump him in front of you. Right. So. No, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> See that? Like, yeah, like, look at the points. 90 points for finishing 56 at the Shark Championship. Like, that's yes, just... Yes, 90 like, points. 90 points. It's basically irrelevant. But, yeah, it didn't, didn't happen. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. Um, hmm. Interesting. Why do they do PTQs? Is it just too many people or something else? How different are the PTQ patterns from regional patterns? Um, well, so first off, they do the PTQs because they're just presenting an opportunity for a small amount of spots into the event that are for people that aren't exempt on the tour. So a lot of times the PTQs are basically your guys that are competing at the, really, the regional level and trying to make it to that next step. So the PTQ are kind of a way to work, earn your way into the field. So... It's it's just there basically for that. They allot spots to it every year. Next year's gonna be a lot different. There's only gonna be like four spots for each PTQ. So I think you're gonna see a lot less people bowl them. Um, and then how different are the PTQ patterns from the regional patterns? Um, they're still really different. I know we use the same patterns, the names and the animal patterns and different things, but we're also using the tour machine when they run PTQs. It's not the, um, it's, it's not, the house machine that you're using for the regional a lot of the time. So if you end up using a Kegel machine for a regional, it's completely different than what we're bowling on for the PTQs. You could bowl in Chameleon. Like they bowled on Scorpion at a regional in the East this past weekend, and it did not play remotely the same as the what it did for us this week using a completely different machine. The the left did not run them over at the regional in Towson, whereas, you know, like we said, there was an advantage here. But again, different building, different oil machine, different oil it all matters. All these things affect everything. So, but yeah, it, it's just different. It's just a different environment. That's what it is. So I'm looking at Shoda. Okay. And his points. Sure. And he's another one. Didn't make it out of a single PTQ other than the world series, but sure. he didn't have to bowl the world series PTQ because of the international. Exemption, he got an international exemption, which yes. is fair. Um, that's what the world series is about. We had 16 different countries this week, but we're talking about the best Japanese bowler to ever put bowling shoes on. And it's not even close. Who's coming over here, and he can't make it through a PTQ. Like it, it, they're just like, hard. They're, it's a, it's so hard to make it through these. Because and and of, Shota is a phenomenal bowler. He's I, so good. Like, congrats to EJ for winning Shark. Um, obviously, you know, six shows this year, and and finally gets the win. Congrats. Obviously, with you know, first one I think since Trip's been born. So, congrats to EJ. But like, I I, I would have loved to see Shota win. Yeah, I I would have. The man is a phenomenal bowler. I've bowled with him multiple times. He's an extremely great person. He's super nice. Um, he's won 21, 21 JPBA titles. That's insane. Yeah. I think it's more than anybody else in Japan ever. And he has not won on the PBA tour. That just, I mean, it's just hard. It is just hard out here. I averaged 233 for one of the PTQs this year and didn't make the cut. Like, it. It's just not easy. I, I had people thinking that I was bowling bad, and it's like, no, they're just really hard, and a lot of these guys are really good. The competition this year only got better. We only had more good bowlers. 
it's not getting easier. There's a lot of younger kids that are really good that are only getting better. And the more they spend their time in this environment, the better they're going to get. So it's not getting any easier and it won't be. And tour trials is going to be a grind. It's going to be hard, but at least they gave us another Avenue now other than the PTQs to try and earn our way out. Yeah, yeah, just, I guess my only gripe, my only complaint is why are, why are the PTQ patterns so much softer? That's what I don't understand. Like it, it's not like they're easy patterns by any means, but the scores are definitely higher in the PTQs than they are anywhere else. They haven't been this year, though. Yeah. No, they haven't. For the most of them. No, the scoring pace on tour this year has been higher than it's ever been. Well, yeah. I mean, the whole tour. But when you look at, like, what's actually taking to make it through the PTQs, the averages are ridiculous. Other than, like, when you look at, like, Cheetah. Like, Cheetah's the, the outlier, of course. But it's, it, the thing is, though, it, it, like, it's not. Like, EJ's about to set the, the scoring record this year. Well, I he's going to set the average record averaging over 230. I understand that, but I'm talking about like cut numbers and stuff. Cut sure. numbers have been way higher in PTQs than on national tour. But the reason that's the case is because they're cutting less people. That, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's yeah. why it's so much harder exactly. to make it out of the PTQs because you're talking sure. about seven-game sprints. Like, that's the thing. When you're, when you're looking at the top 16 or 24 making the cut in the main field compared to the top, we're, both, we're looking at eight or nine. And if you look at every tournament, I guarantee if we went through the season this year, um, here, let me take a look. Let me see what I can I can find. Here. Let's just take a look at so PBA National Tour. I'm going to look at the Players' Championship. Game by game scoring. Let's look at qualifying rounds. So if you just take the qualifying average for the Players' Championship and you look at the top nine, let's just say on average it was eight or nine people out of the PTQs, right? Yeah. The Players' Championship, to be in the top nine after qualifying, it took 234.7. Mm-hmm. That's just as the same score we're looking at in the PTQs. The difference is they took 24 people, so it took 231 right. instead. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's obviously so that's the players. Uh, we're not going to look at the U.S. Open, the U.S. Open is its own beast, it's a different animal. yeah. They're that's the hardest tournament forever. So, let's look at the Illinois Classic. So, Illinois Classic this year, we'll go to game by game scoring after qualifying. They cut to the top 24, and it took averaging 225.7 to make the top 24, mm-hmm. but ninth place was 230, was 230 again, right? So so, again, we're looking at a four- it, to five-pin difference. We're just seeing that that number be so much higher because there's always going to be those, like, five to ten guys that just match up. But So it, those but again, averages like, are higher. I mean, that's not just the case. Like, EJ matches up on everything because he's EJ. Right? I, think, I think my argument is, though, the scores are higher in the PTQ, and the patterns are softer. The difference is, is the bowlers are a lot better on the national tour. Like, not that the PTQ bowlers are bad by any means. Of course, they're not. No, good bowlers are really not, good bowlers. Not, but they're it's just more. not the same level as this group of bowlers Correct. you're looking at. I think so. I, that's why you can say the scores are higher and the, the 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 patterns are softer. I mean, we did use a lot of the name patterns for the PTQs rather than bowling on the animal patterns. We didn't necessarily bowl on a lot of the animal patterns, I believe. That's the other thing I didn't understand is why do we always bowl on a different pattern than what the tournament was meant to be bowled on? Because then it's technically well, it you techni- don't want people to have an extra look at it or whatever. I mean, I agree with that, but like so, looking at it, so they bowled on they bowled on Don Carter for the Illinois Classic, and we bowled on. Why does it not say? We bowled on Mike Alvey, mm-hmm. which is thirty nine feet. And the scoring paces were pretty much identical. We both bought on name patterns. So let me look at the Missouri one. They bowled on Dragon, one of the animal patterns, and we bowled on Billy Hardwick. I'm willing to bet Billy Hardwick is a little easier than Dragon. Oh. So, um, yes. So that's probably why Our, we bowled on the easier pattern. For sure. Um, look at Indiana. So so in Indiana, they bowled on Viper. Mm-hmm. And we bowled on, the PTQ bowled on Don Johnson. Again, Again probably the easier pattern. So, But I think um, it should be the other way around. Yeah, I mean, you look at the shape of this compared to Viper. I mean, um, I think it should be harder on both of them. But if, if you're asking sure. me, both yeah, patterns I mean, need to be more. I think there's a lot of people that are pretty upset with the scoring pace for yeah, the PBA Tour as a whole this year. But... 
that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, it shows the scoring base is higher. We have somebody about to break the record for the highest average for a season. So, I mean, it, it clearly the scores have just been higher. I mean, the Players' Championship kind of kicked that off in a very demanding way. Like, I mean, it's the first time it's taken 230 to make a top 24 in a major. So, Rich here says, wouldn't you want to make the bowlers in the PTQ show what they could do in a main tournament by making them bowl on the same oil pattern as the main tournament? I don't think they necessarily have to bowl on the same pattern, but I would sure. like to see the PTQ bowlers bowling on a tougher pattern because they have to prove their worth getting onto those other patterns to yeah. be able to bowl with the tour guys. So, I know we, we said we weren't going to talk about the U.S. Open because it is such a different thing, but the U.S. Open is a perfect example of that. The PTQ pattern, extremely hard. That pattern is not easy. It is very flat, and it does not take – I think this year the scores might have been a little bit higher, but last year I had to bowl the PTQ for the U.S. Open. I went 70 over. I averaged, like, 209, and I was, like, fifth. Yeah, you were in by a mile. I was in by a mile. They were hard. So they make them hard so that the best bowlers get through for that. And that's my argument. But I to be fair, I think, be. like, the argument we're making, Shota made it through the U.S. Open PTQ. Mm-hmm. The hardest PTQ, the hardest pattern we bowled on all year for a PTQ. Oh, he had to bowl the PTQ? I think he bowled the PTQ at the U.S. Open. Wow. I really? believe so. I know he bowled. I know he made the cut. Let me look. But I don't know if let I me, Let me take a look here. Yeah, that's the one event I didn't bowl. I didn't get to bowl that this year. Oh, that's not it. Let's take a look at the results. Take a tournament. U.S. Open. Mr. Troop won 2024 results. So, PTQ results. Yep, showed ahead of ball. He was nine. So he was. Yeah, he was the number. He was the number at one hundred and fifty-four over. Or no? Or no, he wasn't. No. How many made? The it? number was seventy-seven over. Twenty-five made it. That's still higher than. Twenty-five yeah. people for the U.S. Open was more than what they took for the World Series. Yeah. They only took twenty at the World Series. Mm-hmm. They took twenty-five from the U.S. Open. The Brandon Novak bowl. Oh, sorry. Just kidding. That was <laughs> I knew that was coming because his name's right above Shota, so uh, I, guess, I knew he was going to say I something. I saw that name, and I couldn't help myself. But no, uh, but but here, okay. But this goes back. A lot of people wanted to complain and say the left is easier in the PTQs, blah, 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 blah. Eric Jones, man, I've gotten to know him a little bit more this year. He, look at this, U.S. Open PTQ, hardest pattern for the PTQs, 313 over. He led by 113 pins. Where's the next lefty? Was there another lefty that made it? Hold on. Um, Not there. Dio and 13. Dio was two of the best lefties that we said. And they, they've made it through more PTQs because they're just good bowlers. Yeah. It's not because the left is just better. They're just two of the better bowlers in the PTQs. Stop thinking the left is walled in the PTQs. <laughs> These guys are just really good. Mm-hmm. Dio just won his first title. Eric is just now going to bowl on his first show, bowling for the world championship title. They're just really good. Stop saying the left is better. It's not true. It was better this week. Like, we don't need to complain about the left. It was better this week. That's okay. <laughs> but I'm talking in PTQs. Because, <laughs> again, they made it through the PTQ at the World Series. They both did as well. Mm-hmm. Look at that. No. Two. Two total. Mm-hmm. There were two lefties that made it through the PTQ at the U.S. Yes. Open. Eric Jones, Dio Bernard. Two of the best lefties. They earn it because they're good. Don't take things away from people just because they bowl with the left hand. It's not fair. And but because yeah. they don't use their thumb. But, like, you can't tell me Shota's not – like, Shota's phenomenal. 154 over, made it. Like, Shota's, shot 300, by the way. We talk about him all the time. Man. Shot 300. Watching him bowl is – what his hand does and how low below the ball he can get. It's such sick. a heavy ball roll. It's crazy. It's nuts. Throws it so good. I was so happy to see him lead the Shark Show. So happy. I was very disappointed to see him lose, but also happy for EJ. Like, yeah, I mean, EJ had EJ felt like he had a little chip on his shoulder, I feel like. He had something to go prove. Too many people were running their mouths saying, like, oh, he's making shows and not winning. There's a reason he makes all those shows. It's because he's so good. Yeah. There's no argument, in my opinion, who the two best bowlers on the tour are. Yeah. And three, I guess you can say three. It's the top three. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's EJ Simon Obama. You kind of throw Troop up there too, although he's in your troops. Bowl troops. This year. I mean, but he's up. There. I mean, he won the U.S. Open. Yeah, that's true. He won the U.S. Open. Yeah, he did. Kyle's yeah. in that argument. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, 
it, it's what these guys can do with a bowling ball is absolutely insane. I've seen Kyle strike with less rotation than anyone else I've ever seen strike with. It's, mm-hmm. it's just nuts. I mean, he's a sicko. So, yeah, I mean, I, as far as like the tour trials go, though, it's going to be really interesting because what what's the format? We're bowling in four different it houses, is, right? It's four different houses, eight blocks. And I believe it is it's a lot of five games a block. Let me uh, let me double check. So forty games. It's forty-eight games across four patterns. So four different centers. It's a thousand dollars to enter. We're bowling on cheetah, chameleon, scorpion, and shark. So it's basically the World Series. Um, Why? <laughs> what? Why are we bowling on cheetah? They need so what I think that should I do, want to shoot five seventy nine again. <laughs> so what that's think, why. <laughs> what I think they should do for this is it should be a point system. I like the idea of like that team tour trials. Um, I, I did I like hear that. a suggestion of that. I I don't necessarily know the arguments for or against. But well, it the does argument seem like for it, it is, seems like tour trials works really well. So I don't think that I would be against that. I don't like the idea of somebody going five hundred over on Cheetah. And, and then coasting. coasting their way through yeah. tour trials. I think that's crazy. You don't like what I would try and do? Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't that's not like fair. that. No. <laughs> I mean, I only averaged 242 or something. I generally, lately, I've actually liked Cheetah. The last few years, I've bowled the U.S. or the World Cheetah, Series. I, Cheetah's been a good pattern for me. Cheetah was a good kitty this week. It, yeah. was, it was very good very, kitty, kitty. Very friendly to me this good week. Good kitty. Very good kitty. Um, Cheetah and I got along. Well, that was the first. We got the red ball to match up for the week. We were averaging like 250 or 260 game one. Oh, man. Cheetah was great. Just think if you would have bowled better. Could have made a show. Should have thrown it better. Should have bowled better. Man, it sucks. (laughs) You know, throwing. um, I can say that because I'm I'm an armchair bowler. So, (laughs) piss off. (laughs) I feel like like a brand new bowler again trying to learn shit. Like, this is crazy. Everything is just so different now. It's fun. Get married, take time off, don't bowl any much, very many events. So it is 12 games on each pattern. Okay. It's 48 games. And I like that. In a row. Yeah. It's more than it's more than the World Series. Good. Whew. I like that. Going to be a lot of prep in the gym for that one. That's mm-hmm. going to be. As soon as TOC is over, man, gym in time hard. Oh, time. It, it's just like I'm going to be practicing like five days a week leading up to this just so that I don't feel sore or tired going into this. So, yeah, we have six games, six games on Cheetah. And then, yep, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then the top 12 qualify for priori- prior- priority entry. Mm-hmm. So I know some people have complained about the entry fee where it's like $1,000 and you're basically not getting any money. But – just to be fair, and everyone knows, your entry fees next year on tour would not be paid. Like, you do not Zero pay entry fee. So, you're paying $1,000, and then basically getting handed, like, seven to $8,000 worth of entry fees saying, you get to bowl for free. Well, how funny would it be if the schedule got put out, and all of a sudden it's just three events and then the World Series with the majors? I mean, you'd still technically make money. <laughs> It'd still be like, you'd still get... Three or four thousand plus the sense. Masters in the U.S. Open. That is the my question. Is covered, though? I don't know. I don't I know if it. the Masters in the U.S. Open are. I don't know because they're USBC. I haven't asked. I would have to get clarification from like the players I committee or somebody. But I really don't know. Um, I did think about that earlier. I didn't. I didn't quite know what that would be. Yeah, I don't think it would be. But yeah, I mean that that'd be interesting. Um, let's see what other questions do we have. Let's see. JR, what balls would you have changed to make the last PTQ? The two in my pants. <laughs> I would just I think we can okay. I think we can agree. When we talked at the end of the first block, and you looked at me and said, I never threw resin, I was like, What are you talking about? Cause like I was astonished that you never threw resin on Wolf. I shot 299 with a resin ball. Well, ball. when I try, I tried the few shots that I threw. I had two different shots. I had one that I got up the lane and went runaway Brooklyn. Okay. The other one I got to the gutter and I two pinned. And so, that two pin scared you? Scared the living shit out of me. I mean, I get it. Which which was fine. I understand because then I just said, okay, f this. 
I'm just going left, and I'm and slow just, hooking yeah, everything. Yeah, you, you and I hold 240, 240. Yeah, so Mike's a slave ball. Yeah. Basically. So I'm like, I mean, yeah. he's so good at doing that. Mikey, like, what whatever. you did with that motive tank on Cheetah this week, impressive. Absolutely impressive. I, I wish I could do that with a, a urethane ball that, that is that weak. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, so. But I mean, that was still insane to me. I, I made, so so the way I tried to play Cheetah, I, I got screwed because I ended up right in front of the counter. Wolf. Or, I'm sorry, Wolf, yes. They got, played the same. I ended Honestly, up in, they were very close. Yeah. The so I was in front of the counter to start on 51 and 2. And so, and those pairs suck. And every time I got playing straighter, tried to go up the lane, my ball overhooked. And every time I tried to go around it just a little bit, my ball underhooked. Yeah. And early on, there's no using reactive early on. The like, first game. I just, looked at it. I was this close. Uh, I was this close. I threw a magic gem like four times during practice and it struck three or four times. But the fourth one, it like. I got it to like four, maybe five, like four or five, and it went dead through the face. And I was like, oh, man, I just like, can't have that. I can't because like it meant I had to get it to like two, three, four. Yeah. And it, it That's just a dangerous like, game to play early on. Yeah. So then I just threw the red ball and shot two team. I went two team, two twenty, getting nine, seven times or eight times or something stupid because um, I just didn't carry. But it's what I had to do. You want to belong here? Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know really what I could have. Belong sandwich. Okay, hold on one sec. Let me make you a sandwich. Um, I don't. I, I mean, the only thing I think I would have done differently, like I felt like I had gaps in my bag with bowling balls on the long pattern. I think I screwed up lane play. I think I honestly probably could have used the red ball to start instead of but you kind of talked me out of it because of i can't say it on here yeah but you know what i'm trying to say yeah so talk me so i tried to use the the, the tank more so because of the reaction i was seeing on the of the earth thing. or on the short or on the short on the short on the short yeah, yeah. yeah. so on the short i think i could have got away with the red ball because it hooked sooner and it would have taken away a little bit of that over under and i probably could have got a little straighter up the lane with that one because it would lock up yeah but sense. I tried kind of going around See, it a that's, little bit. And that's the thing. I That's what I did. Yeah. The first game, I just used the 78 to lock up. And then I I didn't feel like – I knew I was going to get forced left. And I was like, I, this isn't going to carry. Mm-hmm. I've got to go. So I just went to resin game two. Yeah. Um, and I just felt like I had to. I, I It wasn't because I wanted to. I Everyone else was averaging – I shot two – like 219 or – no, I shot 220 or something the first game. And I was the highest within four pairs. And then we get to the low end, the scoring board up, updates, and I'm like 42nd. Yeah. And it was like 240 after game one. And I'm like, where's the scores? Like, what's going on? So then I knew I couldn't strike enough throwing urethane. So I was like, I got to go to resin. And then I went like two team, 220, and, and luckily found it. Or no, I shot 180. I think I went two team, 180, mm-hmm. and then went 220, and then matched up with an attention star for a game, shot 299. Yeah. And I, I said going into games three, four, five, and I said this on the mic depth thing, that I was like, I have to get to 100 over. So I knew I had, because I was at even after two, and I was like, I have to shoot 700 the back three. Mm-hmm. And I, that was, that was the difference. I mean, look at the difference. I mean, I ended up. I, I said the same thing. I told myself I needed to get to 100. And then when I was Yeah, 100 gave you a chance. 240, 240 the last two. I'm like, okay. So I got to 60, and I'm like, <sighs> Yeah, way behind pace still, but at least I got a crack at it, and I end up missing by sixty, which is yeah. Exactly but you bowl on pace the night block, like yeah, on I pace bowled, to make the cut. Yeah, I bowled fine the night block, just not yeah. good enough. But my my where I was going with that, if is, you were in the cut going into the night block, though, I was in. You no, stayed fine. in the cut. But my problem was I like I have gaps, like those gaps. I think I got them filled now, but I used the harsh reality, which was shiny. So I used a, a shiny. shinier slow ball yeah. to start. And I had the front five or better three of the games, but as soon as that ball got too slow, I left a five pin the one time, and I'm like, "Ah, this sucks." I had my my next jump I'm five seven twice this week, so don't feel bad, buddy. The next ball that was that was that I had was the eternity or the uh, the, the the exotic gem. Both of those were leap years quicker. Yeah. than what that harsh was. I didn't have anything in between. I didn't have... Yeah. So then it forced me to go a little bit to the left, which then got me out of that zone where I was right of everybody. Yeah. And it forced me to get to where Into everybody started. Where everybody, yeah. And then I was kind of trapped. So I yeah. couldn't put up a big enough number at the end that I needed. 
So, yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, like we both kind of knew, like, like you said, you were fifty to sixty off pace on the short, and you ended up fifty to sixty off. Yeah, like last year, that was the same thing that happened to me in the PTQ. I, I didn't. I was like fifty out of the cut with the short, and then m- missed by one spot. Like, I coasted in that World Series. Yeah, last, last year. year you did. Yeah, you mauled them though. I, I did not bowl. I should have bowled better at the end of the block, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see here. What is the better oil machine, or is there a big enough difference between Kegel and Brunswick? Um, there is a massive difference. I know you asked this 20 minutes ago. Sorry, Robert. But, um, yeah, there is a massive difference between them. I'm not going to say which one's better or worse. That's not for me to say. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't. Which one do you match up better on? Uh, I think it depends on the building. I mean, like, Jackson last year on the Brunswick machine, I finished fifth. And then, you know, I've made the last three Masters brackets. And I've been in the top 24 going into the third day of the U.S. Open the last two years. So, I think it just depends. Yeah. I don't really have a preference. I just think that they ask you to do different things on the line. Yeah. So, it just calls you to look for different ball motion. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Better or worse, that's not. That's not for me to decide. I don't know. Ask. Ask. A bowling center owner, because I'm sure they'd have a better answer than me. Um, shouldn't be exemptions. There's not enough money to be made to tell, poss- tell possibly 200 more additional players to bowl in the tournaments. I've been a member often on since 93. Just open it up. Um, our prize funds aren't dictated by entries at all, like literally. So the entries don't matter. They could run a tournament with 32 people, and the prize fund would still be the same. So they don't need to open it up for entries. That's not something that matters to us or the PBA, um, the USBC, that's a different story. The masters is dictated by entries and the U S open prize fund is correlated to the entries, but the PBA, that is not the case. So no, they don't need to open up fields just to let more people bowl or whatever it is, just because it doesn't affect the money in any way, shape or form. Um, yeah. That's, that's kind of, that's, that's a, that's a big that. misconception that people think Everybody people think if we that. made the field 180 people that we'd be bowling for more money and, that there'd be so much, nothing would change. Absolutely nothing would change. Because the sponsorship money is so much more than what the entry fees bring in. Sure. And people are like, well, then they should just put that extra money into the, they do. No. But it puts, it. all it does is But we spend money on so many other things. We spend money on the TV sets. Uh, I think we have a contract with Fox that has to do with money. Um, We pay, obviously, the tournament directors, certain organizers, like all those types of things. So there's, there's plenty of money that's spent in other places. And like, I know the classic series events, they only bring in with 64 entries. They're only bringing in like roughly like 40 to $45,000 between PTQ and the main field. So, and the price one for those are hundred K. So it has nothing to do with the entries. It's just strictly sponsor driven and whatever Bolero decides that it is. So if I would have thrown a hustle playing up the lane, what would my ball have done on these patterns? Can I change the surface? No. <laughs> just out of box hustle? If, it, if it's out of box, what, which, pin out of box I, hustle? which pin am I hitting? Uh, the three pin is going to be your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Straight through the three pin. I'm washing out every shot. That's why I'm not using I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm storm staff and I haven't thrown a hustle down a lane in the PBA tour environment in the whole time I've been on staff. And I like the hustles. The hustles are really good for our local environment, for what we bowl on. Um, I would use a hustle in, in, in league. Like hustles are great balls. They're a phenomenal price point, like very good. But, um, oh, me, obviously. He bowls better in that building. I ain't even gonna lie. I haven't bowled good in that building in a long time. I just my best finish in that place is like top eight. I make the cut every year, but I can never get well, through matches. That was me last year. I finished the top eight, but I lost to the guy that won. Yeah. I mean, just just Tom Smallwood, you know, not not somebody that's like oh, so a no name, you know, not yeah, just absolute no name, no name bowler. Yeah, guy that would crowbar me on the golf course too. Yeah, he's really good at golf. There's a lot of bowlers that crowbar. I would golf. love to see. The best golfers from the PBA tour versus some of these YouTube golfers do like a match. It'd be so cool. And it'd be great for the PBA. It'd be great for all of us. It'd be so much fun. That's, that's you, you have a friend. She's just so needy. <laughs> so needy. It's We're talking. So she's like, I need attention. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Please talk to me. <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. Get on. Get on. See here. Wouldn't you want to make the bowlers in the PTQ show what they could? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, you read that one already. Do you all believe the scores have been higher on average due to how good all the balls are in the last several years? 
Uh, Chad, no. I do not believe the scores have been higher because of the bowling balls being better. I believe the scores are higher because the bowlers are better, which means that the bowlers are breaking the patterns down better, which makes them easier, and the scores get higher. That is that is the reason that I think the scores are higher. Factual. The, the, the more intelligent the bowlers on the PBA Tour get, and the better they get at lane play, the better the scores will be because the patterns get broken down. There's a reason that these guys average 230 on two to one patterns. I say these guys, but like we bowl out there too. <laughs> these guys. Yeah. But um, yeah, like that's the reason why. It's they they break the, they all play the pattern relatively the same. We play the same zones of the lane, we break them down, and we all understand the transition that we create. And that makes the scores easier because that two to one pattern becomes six or seven to one within a game and a half when you give us 10 minutes of practice. Cause you know, the dispersion charts for professionals are a lot smaller. So we're hitting the same areas of the lane, which means we're creating defined friction. So we know how to use friction, which is why er there's a reason that the scores are higher on cheetah than what they are on wolf or, or badger. Sorry, badger or shark. It's because when you give these guys friction, they know how to use it. They are insanely good at using it. So it's when you start creating that friction, it, it scores are going to be high. Oh, she's. Yeah. Thank mind. you, Don. Appreciate it. Um, John Willock. Shoto on shark got more can openers than I've ever seen. Not sure why. Uh, that's just his ball motion. The right. ball motion he chose to use for that event and for that show. Um, just that was the type of deflection he was going to get by using that ball motion on the line. That's all that is. It's always dictated by your ball motion and how it hits the pins. JR, what swag balls do you currently have in your arsenal? In my arsenal, it depends on where I'm bowling. Like a lot of the local stuff, I'll use the swag stuff quite a bit. On um, PBA stuff, it generally, they're not quite strong enough to be able to be using out there right now. Um, with some of them, like maybe on Cheetah, possibly. Uh, like my my Royal Diamond, I probably will. I'll take one of those out for tour trials, assuming I don't magically make the TOC show or something and find my way into the top 43. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a few balls. I got three reviews from Swag coming. I'm going to go record those tomorrow. So three of those that will be coming out pretty soon. We got three new ones. A pink ball, the Archive Solid coming out the archive was pretty good so the solid version should be pretty good too so if they are good enough they make my bag lately um i have my core bowling balls that i really really enjoy and i take swag balls with me for specific areas so we'll just say that uh jeremy i'm down anytime what? i'm always in he said i need to play cody in a poker training yeah. i'm in good luck with that jeremy let's go <laughs> I played a poker session the other night, actually. It, was good. it went good. I'm trying to see if there's um, any PTQ players that is in the top 43. Technically, year. Dio is, but he won, so he doesn't count. Oh, that's after this week. Are you yeah. looking before? I'm looking right now, You're, as of right uh, now. Were there none? Really? There's none. Go up. There's none? No. Dio's, no, Dio's 40th, up, but... Let me see here. I thought there was one. I guess, well, technically, Don Browski would be. He would be, but Actually, he doesn't Nate bowl Stubler, any of them. Nate Stubler. Yep, Stubler. Yep, so Nate one. Stubler's in. Yep. Nate Stubler and, yeah, Pat would be, but he, he didn't have to bowl them, obviously. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, and obviously, Duran, but he won the Masters. <laughs> Bo oh, yeah. Booger. Yeah, Bug. So but Bug he won. won. So but he won early in the season and hasn't had to bowl the PTQs the last right. three events. So it doesn't count. I mean, he does. Kind he of. started as a PTQ bowler. But he won a title. He did it the way you. That's where you. That's the dream. You you get through a PTQ matchup for the week and uh, win and win a title. That's, but that's what that that shows you how hard it is. I mean, like, so Bog also made it through every PTQ this year, so like he deserved it. Yeah, I mean, for sure. He was going to be in the top forty three most likely, no matter what. So, but other than that, yeah, I think it's just uh, Bug, Bug and Dio. Bug, and by Bug, I mean David Cole. Um, sorry, his name is Bug. Oh, and. Uh... Nate Stubler. Yeah. Bug, Nate Stubler, and Dio. And then Eric Jones is going to be in for sure after this week. Is he? Yeah. Go up. Hold on. Go up a second. He wasn't in here. Yeah. 
No, he will be once they put the world championship points in. Right. I'm trying to get down to where he is, though. Yeah, so he's 57th at 28-20. Yeah, he's going to be in after the world championship. He's guaranteed a top 10 finish. Which will, how many points will that be? Uh, at least, let's see, be like 12, be like 3,600 points. Yeah. Something like that. 12 to 1,300. He's probably somewhere between 3,500 and 4,000 points. Well, He'll be in. He ain't going to be in then because 43rd right now is 4,300 points. Yeah, but he already has 2,000. Yeah, he's got... He's going he gets, to get another 4,000. Oh, I thought you were saying he was getting another 12 to 1,300. No, it's so it's a major. So it's 12 to 1,300 times three. Oh, yeah, right. So it'd be 3,500 to 4,000. Yeah, so he'd be in then. Yeah, he's going to be in. We think the number is going to roughly be like 5,000 to 5,500 points. That's what we think the number is going to be. So if that's true, like if that's, you know, if we're ballparking it close, then then he'll be in. He'll probably be locked in after this week. Martel might actually be locked in as well, too, because of this week. Because he's probably going to get another 3,000 points because of the Worlds. Mm-hmm. So he, he he might be locked in. Um, I don't know if he can bowl it. Does he ever, I don't know if he has a regional title or not. I don't think he does. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, he'll probably be locked in after the Worlds. And especially if he wins a match or two on TV. So. That goes to show you, man, you have one good week. Yep, that's what if you're about. If you're exempt and you have one good week, you should stay exempt. Yep, yeah, for sure. That's why, like, the PTQs, it's if you have one good week and, and can capitalize and make a show, you have a really good chance of staying in. Like, that's last crazy. year, last year I almost did that with Jackson. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, that's what it is. But the only reason it is that way is because we only have like 12 or 13 events. Mm -hmm. If we had 30 events, that wouldn't be the case because it'd be harder. You'd need a lot more points to stay in. Right. But just because the amount of events is is only 12, 12 or 13, I think is what the total number is. um, It just, it makes it where that point number is just so much lower. And with, so what is it? Is it five majors? Yeah, it's five majors, right? So, I mean, if you have a good week in one of those five majors, you can lock yourself into the, to the top 43 pretty easily. Which is also, I mean, look at both of us. I mean, yes, we can say we both good in the doubles, but, like, if you make the show at the TOC, you're in the top 43, you're exempt next year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it'll only take you technically one week as well. I mean, I both good this week. But if I make the show at the TOC, it's the same thing. I basically just whacked him for a week, and then I'm like, hey, look, I'm in. You know? <laughs> this is funny. People are still upset that Jared's layouts don't matter video. They'll get over it. Uh, somebody brought it up. That's fine. <laughs> People are silly. Why does my stream yard keep crashing? It's just mine. It's just you. Is your wireless thing not good? No, it is. Look, it says I'm connected. It's odd. No, no I'm not. <laughs> of course. Need a better laptop. <laughs> it's probably because you dropped it. I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> the Wi-Fi adapter hasn't worked in this for a while, unfortunately. Bring out the abacus. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's one of those things where you slide the, the thing over to do counting, to do math. Oh. One of those, like, yeah. I was like, I did not know what that meant. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, someone estimated 5,500. Yep. Um, Sherman. Well, Sherman's going to be exempt because he has the title. Yeah, he don't matter. So Sherman, Sherman won't matter. He'll get the ball next year no matter what. The only difference is, is if he's using his title exemption, I believe he still has to pay the entry fee. Is the only thing. But um, yeah, no, Kyle will be bowling next year no matter what. Um, and he's finally starting to get healthy again, which is really good. So that's good to see. There was a a sports therapist there this week that worked on him a bunch. I know. So, um, but yeah, he he will. He will be bowling on the PBA Tour next year, no matter what. What seed is he? He is the seventh seed. 
17, I believe. Yeah, 17. So let's see. I can tell you how many points he's guaranteed for that. Uh, give me one second. This one comes here. So. It's like six grand, six thousand. So he's in. No. If it's that's triple not, points, that's not. Oh wait, what event is you, is that you're looking at? That's the players. Oh, so Give me a second. that points list is weird. Well, because it's it's whatever one of these is, like whatever the points are from one of these times three. Yeah. So like, if he loses, he'd finish eighth. He gets seven hundred and fifteen points. Times and three. times three, so he'd get two thousand forty-five, two thousand one hundred and forty-five mm -hmm. points. What do you want? Water. Yeah. Wait, Dad. I'll pour it. I'll put it in. I'm gonna use that cup. I think they have my points wrong. Looking at Cheetah. Put them in there, right? Hold on a second. I don't think they have my points right. It's true. They don't want you in. No, okay. No, they have my points right. Yeah, I finished sixth for 775 points. No clue. All right. Um, no. No more. Trust me. Try it. One more. One more. One more. One more. Um, actually, I like your optimism there, but I don't think. Hold on a sec. I don't think winning. The playoffs. I don't think winning would actually get me in the playoffs. Yeah, no. Um, Steve, if even winning the TOC, I don't think would get me into the playoffs. So I, I'm going to have like maybe 3,000 points or something a little less than that. Um, yeah, I'm going to have like 20. 500 points, 2,500 to 3,000 points. Um, that would only put me at 10,000. I don't think that would actually keep me in the top 16. It might. 16th place right now is 7,700. So maybe. But I'll take just winning the TOC because it gets me exempt on tour no matter what <laughs> because it's a major. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, any day of the week, I'll take that. <laughs> No questions. I'd love to. I'd love to, you know, be a PTQ guy that wins the TOC. It's only happened a couple times. So, and yes, Rich, that is before my time. Matt O'Grady did it. Well, not PTQ, yeah. but I didn't want to say the phrase. Win. I didn't exactly want to say the phrase. I want to. I want to pull a Matt O'Grady. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I would love to win the TOC out of the PTQ like Matt O'Grady did. I would love to do that. <laughs> That'd be insane. So, well, I mean, there's oh, still the let's see. There's still ninety of you watching. Any other questions? You guys have anything you want to talk about? What's going on? Let's see. Our final standings, by the way. So Russo and Jesper one two. Graham got to third, shooting two seventy or two fifty mm -hmm. or whatever it was. EJ in fourth. Justin Knowles in fifth, Eric Jones sixth, Kyle Sherman seventh, Packy in eighth, and Michael Martell is your ninth seed. So, like we said, two right handers. Um, and then we've got seven lefties. So, we're going to see. Well, it'll be interesting how that pair plays and, and what they do. You know? um, 
you know, a lot of people said if Belmo got matched up in the Scorpion show, could he have won that show? Kind of goes the same thing here. If Kyle and EJ can can shape him in a pretty good way, you know, there's some big scores out there to be had on this pattern. I mean, I didn't look at, let's see. Let's see what match. Let's see. Um, this isn't a. Uh, I mean, like here, EJ shot 250, 270, 240, 240. So, I mean, there's some big scores out there. If he gets in a spot where he can just shoot 240 every game, it gives him a chance to run the ladder. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's coming from the – so he's going to be your four seed. They split it up, though, isn't it? Don't they split it up to two shows? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm pretty sure they rerun run the lanes. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. But, like, so Kyle's your seven or your six seed – or seven seed, sorry. So – Kyle gets to wall up that pair by himself for Saturday night. Cause I think that's, that show is on Saturday night. So Kyle gets to do whatever he wants to that pair on the right side of the lane. He's going to be the only righty bowl in that show. You're going to make him throw the lightning. <laughs> I don't think they made him. I don't think they did either. I don't think they made him, but, I, but you know what ball's going to look good this weekend? The lightning. Look, yeah. Who knows? That place hooks. It a could. Lot. It depends. I mean, like you said, he can wall him up. He could decide that he's going to throw a plastic for 20 minutes. On the just... left side. <laughs> <laughs> Deep, I, there's no defensive bowling, right, Jay? I, I think they would uh, frown upon that. I, like, Kurt Von Kruger actually has yelled at people for that before. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's not on there anymore, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, in general, you know, Kyle's going to have a look at that pattern. And if Kyle doesn't make it through the ladder... You're going to have EJ as the only righty on the top five show. So then again, you're, you're going to be looking at a spot where you've got somebody with a 500 plus rev rate that's pretty good at following his own transition and knows how to break a lane down with, I mean, it's not like. Just move left, hit it harder. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he could, he could hit stuff with 180 and just create, get rid of all that out of bounds. Got to be he, careful of creating over under though. Like I mean, he could. Cliff. Yeah, but look, I'm, I think if anybody's going to blend the cliff, it's going to be EJ, you know? Um, oh, that's a great question. What's this? If you both make the finals, will you shit talk each other on the show? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. It would be the most There's entertaining no debate show you would ever watch in your life. Absolutely no debate. 100%. Yeah, it wouldn't even be close. I mean, we would. Their degrees be one five. We would WWE this shit. We would make it so scripted. We would get under each other's skin, pretend to be. We'd get mad and I mean, everything. I don't know I'd if throw, you guys saw. I'd throw a chair down lane. I mean, hey, I don't think he'd throw a chair. <laughs> Just jerk you it off the dry you won't. <laughs> Don't steal my words. I might jerk it off the dry more. I love jerking it off the dry, you know? That's what I do. That sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you guys watched the Scorpion show, I was there. I went and watched the show in person. And the Packy versus Kevin Williams match was the most exciting match I've watched in a long time. They both got loud. Packy stood on a chair. They had a ton of fun. It was great. If we bowled each other on TV, there's nothing being held back. Like, I will just look him in the face and tell him he sucks. Like, nah, he'd be a wuss. He'd just, <laughs> that's not true. He'd, he'd be worried about getting fined and everything else. Nah, but, well, it'd I'm, be worth it. It'd be I'm worth there, every penny. I'd be out there dry humping the ball return and everything. I'd no, be, you wouldn't. I would happy Gilmore this shit. <laughs> you'd just make me more relaxed by doing that. I would bowl better. <laughs> you, that would actually probably make my first experience on TV so much easier because I'd be like, this is going to be so much more casual compared to, like, if everyone was dead silent and it was just like... Okay, here's this moment, ton of pressure. Like, that'd be so much worse compared to if I had to bowl you, I'd be like, let's go. That's why I wanted to make the double show so bad because I knew you'd help. This this would for sure happen. I would be chucking. Oh, yeah. I like to keep my shame in the return. He would just throw it somewhere else. Yeah. Anybody yeah. want a souvenir? Here you go. <laughs> I like to keep mine on the ball return. He would 100%. And I guarantee you, he would be more salty if he lost than if I lost. No. 100%. 100%. I mean, losing to you, that would suck, yes. That's that what I'm saying. Be You'd be more salty losing to me than if I lost to you. <laughs> but to be fair, I lost to you a lot when I was younger, you know, 10 years ago. So I just got used to losing to you. Now I'm fucking trying to learn how to bowl again. 
Ooh, yeah. Watch your mouth. I said an F bomb. I get me saying. I think that's the first one. We might that have done almost an hour and forty five minutes. That's the first F bomb that came out, <laughs> and of course it was me. How was it me? You swear way more than me. Yeah, I was close to I'm, throwing a chair at Spectrum. I'm close to throwing a chair at Spectrum every year. If you heard the mic'd up thing, apparently they didn't even have to edit it much. I didn't cuss much for the one that I did for the PBA. You were definitely more tame on his microphone than you were on mine. Well, that was different. You didn't. I was bowling with you. You didn't give a damn about I was bowling mic. with you. So you made it that way. Because you didn't care. So no. then when you didn't care, I didn't care. I never care. Because honestly, if people are going to get mad at me for swearing, go watch a different show. <laughs> go watch somebody else's channel. Um, all right, here's a good one. You want to put this one up there? Scroll oh, up a wait, bit. hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, my God. What are we, what are we after? Uh, just a little bit. Right there. This one. This yeah, one. yeah. I knew which one you were going after. Yeah. Uh, so, do I feel like they are necessary? Um, necessary is a very interesting word. I I don't... I, I, mean, I think ball reps are a very, very, very good resource. I think what they provide to the bowlers is very important. Um, it's very similar to having a caddy in golf. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> I had to. I mean, it's funny though. <laughs> but no, I, I think I think it's an extremely useful resource. I think it makes sense for the companies to have ball reps out there because you want your bowling balls on TV. Um, I think a lot of those guys have been around bowling for a long time, and they. They can be very helpful. Um, I think there's also times where, like, you don't have to listen to the ball reps. I think there's times where the ball reps are there to make a suggestion, and I think it is what it is. You know, you can decide to take their information or you cannot. I mean, it's the same thing. A golfer, his caddy can look at him big. I think you should hit six here, and he's like, nope, I'm going to hit a seven, and that caddy can't do anything about that. Well, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, like, he doesn't care. So, I mean, it is what it is. I think – the ball reps have probably the most unappreciated job in our industry. They, I mean, when we bowl bad, there's a lot of, like, a lot of guys, no matter how they, like, if they're bowling bad, sometimes you got to blame it on somebody. But, I mean, they they do not get a lot of appreciation. They do not get a lot of, of respect. And I wish that they... <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> trying, trying to forget. <laughs> Thanks for that. Appreciate you. I won't let him forget. <laughs> <laughs> trying like, to forget. Clearly, that pair was easy, and he did the wrong thing. Dude, I struck forever in practice. You won practice? I won the hell out of practice. Those guys couldn't. You just didn't win the tournament. <laughs> I just then couldn't strike when the lights came on. Ronnie had – Ronnie, I mean, he got some breaks. <laughs> Sean bowled the better game by far. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I, I've never actually game. I've seen clips of Ronnie through that, but I don't think I've actually watched the whole show. Um, maybe it's probably been years. I probably did a while ago, but yeah, no. Um, but yeah, the ball rep thing. I think they are necessary. I think they're an extremely big resource. Um, I think they're very good at what they do, and I think it makes sense from the ball company's perspective to have them out there. So it's yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I, I think there'd probably be a lot of different things if you didn't have them. Like I think that there'd be times where you would learn faster. And there's also times where you would learn less because if you're lost and you just can't figure it out, ball reps can help you learn of what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but there's also times where like, you just know to do the right thing and you don't even need the ball reps help. Cause you're just like, Hey, I'm, I've got, I've got the nuts. I'm good. Like, I don't need your help. Go help somebody else that's lost. So, I mean, it's, it, it's indifferent. I think there's people that would probably feel on either side of that argument, but like, I I still think they just get treated very poorly a lot of the time and it's a very uh, unappreciative job and they're they're longer than us sometimes and I I always thank them every week when they help me so like this week thank you for Chris Schlemmer thank you Rob Gottschall Jim Callahan and Tim Mack you guys were extremely helpful during the World Series I got to drill a bunch of balls um I got to try a bunch of new things I learned a ton so thank you guys I really do appreciate it it's it you need resources, you need tools to compete on the PBA tour, and they are one of them. So whether people think that or not, it's just what it is. It's true. They are a resource. They're a massive tool, and it, it can be the difference in you making a cut or not. You just called them massive tools. Oh, I did. That, <laughs> that's rude. The truth always comes out. The truth always comes out. Who has? That's going to get clipped in that. That's for screen. sure. You are now... Yeah, out of context. Out of context, screwed. Who, in your opinion, has the best release currently on tour? 
Um, hmm, that's an interesting. I don't think I have an opinion on that. Whose game do I like the most? What's up, brother? <laughs> Special teams. Special players. Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> um, I don't know who I... who. I'm trying to think if there's one guy. Who has the best release current on tour? As a guy that's one-handed and uses his thumb, I'd love to think that I could ever do what EJ could do, but I just couldn't. I just can't. Like, he's just... He is a, he so is quick. a freak. I mean, he's so quick. He gets his elbow into a better position than, I mean, it's like almost what two handers can do. So it's absolutely just insane. And, um, yeah, no, that's not possible. Uh, I think release wise, like I, I mean, I think some of my, my personal friends know this, but like I've always respected and, and loved Chris Brather's game. Mm -hmm. um, just what that man can do with the bowling ball is extremely impressive. He can create massive amounts of rotation. He can create tilt. He can create zero rotation. Um, and he's just able to do a lot of things in the lane. So I, if you ask me, that's I like his game, his release more than a lot of other people. I think a lot of the two handers are similar, but like you can't you can't take away from what Belmo can do with the bowling ball. I mean, it's absolutely insane. So I I, I think to say who's the best, that's that's I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on best. I just know who I like. I think uh, so. my the guy that I think threw it the best and throws it the best, or when he was bowling on tour, he's no longer bowling on tour. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all might laugh at this, but Dan McClellan. There's a lot of people that I have gotten some hot takes about him being. Did he win? He didn't win. Yeah. He, There's some people that think he's the best guy to ever bowl on tour to not win a title. I, I think he's up there as you know one of them, for sure. I still put he's he is a friend. Um, so maybe I'm a little biased. There's still one person I put in front of him for that. And that's Richie Wolf. Yeah. Um, I think Richie Wolf is still arguably the best bowler to ever bowl in the PBA tour to not win it. Yeah. I think he is. I think he throws it phenomenal. And I there's nothing I would love more than to watch him win a PBA title. Nothing. That that would mean a lot to me. Just because he deserves it. But I don't think there's a I I don't know of anybody that would ever argue with me about me saying the most fun to watch throw a ball when it came to like smoothness and technique was David Ozio. I never got to watch him. Oh, it was so sick. Never got to watch that. So sick. That guy. It's unbelievable. One of my favorite bowlers to watch growing up for me. Obviously we're like nine years apart, but um, I, Michael Fagan. Yeah. What I, that man could do with the bowling ball was, he was a freak. His ball roll always tripped me out. Yeah. Cause it was That's super tilty. Grip yeah. And like, yeah. Super tilty. So I could never like, I'm like, man, how does this ball do what it does? Because he was a trickster, man. It was kind of like watching Ryan Schaefer, who was another one. It was different. Schaefer could do anything. I mean, Pete's, ball. Pete's ball roll was always extremely unique. Yeah, for sure. Norm was obviously the guy that could do a ton. No one throws it like Walter. No one's ever bowled on tour that threw it like Walter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not even close. Um, and, I mean, he's won more titles than anybody. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many. Like, could you imagine if there were 30 stops a year for 10 years straight? Like, how many how many titles would EJ and Belmo and Simon and these guys have? I mean... Like, would, would Walter's title reign even have a chance to hold up? I don't um, think it would. So, EJ is, I think, 32. Simo is 25 or 26. And Simo has 14 titles, and EJ has 22 titles. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Norm was still winning titles in his late 40s. He won titles in his 50s. Did he? Mm -hmm. Parker, yeah, I know, is the oldest. Pattern Parker tournament. is the oldest to win a title, I believe. At like I thought 55. Duke was. I thought Duke was that last title he got at that dual pattern event. I thought was Parker was still. Maybe, maybe Parker in, had the record, and then Norm took in it. Indianapolis. Maybe. Maybe Parker had it, and then Norm is the one that got it after. I know I, I Par Parker won know. Cheetah. Parker won at the World Series the one year, and I I think that he set the record, and then maybe Norm took it. But either way, yeah, um, yeah I mean, it's just. But 30 like, stops. Like, think EJ, still has, EJ still has 18 years before he turns 50. I mean, so he's won 22 yeah. titles in – 10 years. And, and that's what I'm saying, though. And there's so, been a third of the stops every year. Like, the tour has been yeah. cut in a third compared I mean, to what those guys bowled. Those guys bowled 30, 33 weeks. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be insane. I 
I think if that was the case, it would be hard pressed to say that somebody wouldn't be able to like taking someone like Belmo, you know, obviously he set the record for most major titles, but you know, there's always the talk of like, it's probably really hard for him to ever catch Walter because Walter is what? 41 or 43 or 42. Is it 42, 42? right? I think it's 42. I think, mm, let me see. Let me see. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it's 42. I'm sure I can look it up. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, there's not enough of that. How can, how can Belmo catch him? Like, he's... 47. Wait, what? Is it really? And, yeah. Or are they... He, he holds the record for all-time standard PBA Torquery titles, 47. Yeah. Standard. Yeah. Where could I get 42 from? I don't know. But okay. he has 47 titles. I think if we had 30 events a year, I think it might be a little late now for someone like Belmo. I mean, what's Belmo at? 30? My internet just go out again. <laughs> As I typed that. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's like the, the connector here is just like kicking me off for some reason. 31. He has 31. 31 so with 16 15 behind. Majors. I, I don't know if he could catch him at this point, like if we started having 30 events now. How old's Belmo? 42. He's in his early 40s, I think. Yeah. So if, but if he had that for the last 10 years, I think it would have been hard pressed to say he wouldn't have caught him. But who knows? I don't know. He's 40. He's 40. 40 or 41? 40. Oh, yeah. He's 41. He's 41. Fucker's older than me. Oh, no, he's <laughs> not. He's 40. He's, yeah, so he'll be 41. He'll be year. 41 this year. Yeah, I mean, I, if we started having 30 events a year, I think he could catch him. Probably could. I think he could. Probably could. And I think someone like EJ would put up, would be able to get to those numbers because he has 15 years of that. Right. So... And and Simo, I mean Simo, just like he's gonna get to twenty five thirty, if not more. I mean he's gonna win the triple crown. He's going he's going to do those things. I don't think it's a will he. I think it's a when will he. You know, you know, because it's gonna happen. I mean that Simo is a freak. Yeah, what he sure. can do with the bowling balls absent. I watched him throw backup balls and throw a four bagger this week on Scorpion. He said he shot eight twenty the first three, and was like. I'm just going to throw a backup the last two because the, they got so hard on the right. Like that, depending on what pairs you hit, you didn't know. Yeah. He just threw a shiny gem backup. I think there's a clip of him like going like Brooklyn. And he's like, yep. Got to use both sides <laughs> or something. Like, I mean, it, he's, he's a freak. I mean, he won a title throwing a backup ball. Like dude's just, he's probably one of the most creative bowlers to ever put on bowling shoes. Ever. He can do a lot. Yeah. It's insane. Lots. He can change his tilt. He can change rotation. He can change his rev rate. That's one of those things, speed. though. Everybody, I mean, everybody thinks two-handed is an is a advantage because of, you know, rev rate. It's not the rev rate. It's the yeah. ability to, to manipulate your tilt so easily. I think A.J. Johnson has the record at the ITRC for the highest rev rate. It's like 6, 620. I think, like, a one-hander said that. I don't even think it's a two-hander. Yeah, but how many guys have actually gone out there to do it? Though? I don't know. I'm just saying, I think he has the record. Yeah. But... Yeah, because like when we did the uh, when I was on Ebonite staff and we did the uh, there was oh, a 42, camp. 42 is early Anthony. Yeah, there was a camp, a camp we went to right before Christmas. All the staffers and Dom and Bill and all of us were out there. We went to the training center, which is now the Creating the Difference Center. Um, we did the the bowler ID and all the rev rate and stuff. And Dom was <laughs> he was messing around trying to get it as high. He got it to about five hundred. He was just trying to bang on that son of a gun, and that's where. That's what I was talking about when Gotcha was there. He was working for UBI. And I went through, and I was 465 at the time. And he said the same thing. He's like, your rev rate's sneaky high. I never would have thought you were that high. It's like, it's probably not that high now, but it was then. Beat Will? Who's Will? Uh, he meant Simo. Oh, Simo. You beat Simo at the Paragon, I guess? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you beat him to win? Is that the year you won? Oh, okay. 
He was probably 18. <laughs> I ran over. Simon was probably like 18 years old at the time. Like, that's insane. That tournament was so hard, and you had an 18-year-old you bowled in the finals. Like, that's nuts. It just shows you how good he was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's just a freak. Uh, which do you all prefer to throw in tournaments, hybrids, solids, or pros? Completely depends on what we're bowling on and what we need. Lane tells you what type of balls to throw, not not us. We don't decide. Um, obviously, if we get a choice, we're going to throw solids probably more often because they're more controllable. But, again, it's just all dependent. So, yep. Yeah. Are we getting to this point? Yeah, we're getting to the point where I'm getting antsy. Yep. So, so, let's wrap it up. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. Well, I don't know how many viewers we ended up having total. Um, well over 100 for the entire night. So. Yeah, I mean, we stayed around this 90 number. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this, please click the button. Make sure to subscribe, please. Yeah, subscribe, like. And even uh, if you don't like our videos, just watch them anyway, or at least just let them run in the background. That's cool. <laughs> we, we appreciate that. So we're trying to grow this so we can get to a point where uh, we have some exciting things happening. So, sure. And we do. We already have a plan yep. for 100K. When you get to should we just tell them? No. I'm not telling anybody anything. All right. Should we? Okay. How about this? Let's set a number. When we get to 90K, we'll announce what the 100K giveaway is. Sure. When yes. we get to 90,000 subscribers, we will announce what the 100K giveaway is. We already have a plan. It's already it's already planned. It's already done. So, it's a done deal. And there's going to be other things. It's not just going to be one get one prize. It's going to be a top prize, and then there's going to be some after that. A so. dinner date with Cody. No. <laughs> you get to come watch me get my hair cut. He's get, yeah, there you go. I get to shave his head. <laughs> yeah, he's going to shave my head live on stream. <laughs> I agree with Abe. No, I, to like I didn't say that. Again, I don't need clips of me saying that. I'm cutting that clip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We're out of here. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, thanks, guys, for coming. Hit um, the like button and stuff for us. We're going to do this more often. We're going to try and do this consistently. Obviously, the tour ends next week, so... We're going to be around. I think we're going to try and make posts on Mondays on both of our pages and basically ask for what you guys want to talk about. And He's got a new athlete page, so he's going to be pushing I that do. out there. Make sure to go follow that. We'll try. Once he has it, I'll link it in the description and stuff yep. so you guys can get to it. So Absolutely. If you don't already like mine on Facebook, go follow there, too. So I yep. post a lot of different stuff on there as well. We still have so. the TOC, and then we have the Memorial Day Classic. We have a bunch of content that's going to be coming. So, yep. yeah, make sure you follow and subscribe. And we, again, we appreciate all you guys. Thanks for coming out tonight. It was fun. What's up, brother? See you. <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>